There's a saying in Nashville, all hat and no act. But when it comes to Tim McGraw, his style and stage presence are as big as his Stetson. It's something we call it. You know, if someone has it or they don't have it. I said, he's got that it. Tim McGraw is, he is every man's pal and every girl's dream. The country cowboy drives high octane concerts with his mixture of honky tonk tunes and tender ballads. They said Conway Twitty was the best friend a song ever had. And I think Tim is like the modern day best friend of a song. But life hasn't always been easy for the 34 year old artist who uncovered a childhood secret that forever changed his life. He looked at me and he said, I just want to know if I can call you dad. <laughs> he said he just wanted to know that he could call me dad. McGraw finally found perfect harmony in his life when he married a country music diva. We have been on stage together many, many times. I still get that same, you know, I can't wait to see him around the corner and I can't wait to, to hear him and he makes my heart pitter-patter. <laughs> Tim McGraw is one of country's top-selling male artists. From sawdust saloons to the biggest stadiums in the country, the sizzling performer attributes his success to giving the fans what they want. Tim McGraw's path to prominence began in the rural South. He was born on May 1st, 1967, in Delhi, Louisiana, a small farming town. But his birth was unplanned and shrouded in secrecy. When I first realized I was pregnant, it was my first time. I didn't tell anybody. I was over six months pregnant before my mom knew. 18-year-old Betty D'Agostino met Tug McGraw in the spring of 1966 in Jacksonville, Florida. She was a high school senior and Tug was a pitcher in spring training for the minor leagues. The two were introduced at a party and one thing led to another. Weeks after their second date, Betty discovered she was pregnant. I was embarrassed that I had let the situation get out of hand, but we didn't really know each other that well. It was like our second date and uh, I didn't want to tell him. Even when my mother wanted to tell him, I didn't want to. I went, got on the phone, called Tug. He says, that kid's not mine. I don't want nothing to do with it. So I said a few choice words and I slammed the phone down. Tug had a promising pitching career with the major leagues and didn't want to be tied down with a young woman he barely knew. My reaction was, uh, I think it, initially it was denial. Her intuitions as a mother were probably uh, strong and, and deep, whereas mine as a jock ball player were, uh, were not as focused. Betty's family supported her choice to keep the baby. In February of 1967, she dropped out of high school and moved with her parents to Winsboro, Louisiana, so they could be close to Betty's maternal grandparents. Months later, Betty gave birth to Tim, who brought newfound joy into her life. Although she was living with her family, Betty needed money and took a job at a local bus station cafe. She soon caught the eye of Horace Smith, the truck driver who frequented the diner. She brought Tim at that night and he was running around, you know, just walking good and falling and all that. And he came over and I put him on my lap, you know, and started feeding him out of my plate. And that's how I first met him. Horace was instantly taken with the hard-working single mother. He wanted to marry Betty and become a father to Tim. Betty was reluctant to wed Horace, who was 12 years her senior, but eventually accepted his proposal. In December of 1968, they were married. The couple quickly had two daughters, Tracy and Sandy. 
Horace eventually adopted Tim, but at the time, Tim didn't know he wasn't his real father. Although their relationship was turbulent at times, Tim and Horace formed a strong bond. Betty decided not to tell Tim who his biological father was until he was old enough to understand. But she kept up with Tug McGraw's career when he began pitching in the major leagues. There's a lot of stuff he learned from Horace that he wouldn't have learned just being my child or, or being the son of Tug McGraw. They, real life things instead of just baseball. Horace is a cowboy. Tim calls him the Marlboro Man. And uh, he's the one that taught Tim to ride horses. Tim's parents also instilled in him an appreciation for music. At age three, Tim sang a solo hymn in front of his church congregation. By age nine, he starred in a school play, The Music Man. Gosh, from the time he could talk, he liked to sing. I liked to sing, so it was like we sang in the car all the time. He loved church. He loved being in front of people. He liked the, getting up and singing. Even though he was shy, once you got him up there, he was really good at it. I can remember, you know, Mom singing around the house and having Tim sing, and I can remember him singing me bedtime songs when I was little. My daddy, Horace, he, he drove a truck called Cottonseed a lot from Texas to Louisiana, so I rode in an 18-wheeler with him most of that time and sat in the back of a the nature wheeler in a sleeper cab and listened to eight tracks of Charlie Pride and Merle Haggard and, and Charlie Rich. And so I, I remember being five years old and, and be able to sing every word to every song. Tim also loved playing sports, especially baseball. He regularly collected the cards of his favorite players, particularly the colorful New York Mets pitcher Tug McGraw. Tim's love of music and sports provided a distraction from his parents' rapidly deteriorating marriage. Betty and Horace quarreled often and finally divorced when Tim was 10 years old. Only one year later, as he rummaged through his mother's papers for an old photograph, Tim discovered the identity of his real father. His face was as white as the sheet on his bed, and he found his birth certificate. And on the birth certificate, it said who his dad was. And he said, is this what I think it is, is Tug McGraw my dad? And I said, yes, Tim, you're Tug McGraw's son. First off, you're not really prepared and old enough to know, to know what to do with the information or how to deal with it at all or how to even process it. So you spend a little time of, of, of really not knowing what to think or what to figure out. You know, it's just weird that I happen to end up being his son, but incredible, you know, that, that you find out your dad's a pro baseball player. We had planned the whole time. He got old enough to understand to tell him who his daddy, you know, his father was. But it happened, so then he knew. When my dad found out that Tim knew, it really hurt him that Tim knew now that he wasn't his dad. He still calls my dad daddy. So it's just, it's hard. <laughs> I think that's. I don't know, that's probably one of the hardest things we went through. He said, will I ever get to meet Tug? So I told him, I said, you know, I don't know. He knows about you. He has not, to this day, chose to have any communication with you. All I can do is say, I will try. Betty wrote a letter to Tug McGraw's manager, pleading with him to arrange a meeting. Tim nervously waited and hoped that his famous father was finally willing to meet his forgotten son. 